Hi everybody. So, we've been talking a lot about heaters at the moment, and that's because it's bloody cold and it's bloody expensive, and you can see me wearing at least three layers of thermal clothing because I work in a shed. So, heaters are very much on my mind and I think on other people's minds too. In video 1761, we talked about controlling them, how to do it, and doing it super simple. The idea of behind doing it, of course, is a little bit more complicated, but it involved Ohm's Law. Now, these heaters, I, I've been talking them about, about them as resistive heaters, because that's the way I think about them. They're big old resistors, and it's a common way of looking at them. But they're also called ohmic heaters, and if you've watched 1761, you now know why they're called ohmic heaters. But there's also another way of referring to them, and that's calling them dual heaters. They're often called joule heaters because, of course, joule is um, the measure of energy. Now, handily enough, one watt is equal to one joule per second. So when we're thinking about electricity, we can instantly convert watts to joules super easy. And that makes it great to get hold of how big your heater needs to be. Now, if we're going to heat a space, we need a heater that's big enough to heat that space where we don't have to wait for the second coming. We want it to happen within a reasonable amount of time. Imagine trying to make your cup of coffee if you had to wait for 20 years before your brew was up. You want to know how big to make these things and that's about designing the heater and that's what we're thinking of. We're thinking of how do you go about designing a heater? Well, the first place to start is what is it that you want to heat? Now, luckily for us, there's only really two things we're interested in. That is the air for space heating and water for hot water. And materials have a property. They have a property called the specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity is the energy needed to raise the temperature of a material by one degree centigrade for a fixed mass. So it's usually given in kilojoules per kilogram per degree centigrade. So the mass is one kilogram, the joules is the amount of energy you need to put in, and the degree centigrade is how much you want to raise it by. And there are tables of these things. You can actually just look them up. If you go to Wikipedia, you'll get the specific heat capacity of air and water. Dead easy, just by reading it. Water, it turns out to be 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram per degree, and air, it's 1.006 kilojoules per kilogram per degree. You don't need to remember those numbers, you just need to know that those numbers exist. You can look them up on Wikipedia anytime you need them, and that is the amount of energy needed to raise one kilo by one degree and of course that's essential information that you need when designing a heater because you need to know how much energy you need to put into the material that you want to heat. So let's take a kettle as an example. So if you have a bog standard kettle let's make it a kilowatt to make everything easy. Bog standard kettle is going to hold about two and a half litres, density of water is one so it's going to be about two and a half kilos. Now, it's 4,200 joules to raise one kilo, one degree, and let's say the water's at zero, we want to take it to 100, where it's boiling, again, just for ease. So that means we roughly need about a million joules in order to do that. And that sounds like quite a lot. But remember, a watt is a joule per second, so we need about a million joules. We've got about a thousand watts, so a thousand joules per second is the heat energy we can transfer from the kettle heating element into the water. If we do that, work out that calculation, it turns out that that kettle is going to take about 17 minutes to boil, something round about there. Now, that's quite a long time, which is why most kettles are around about three kilowatts, because that'll take about six minutes or so to boil, from zero to a hundred. And of course, you know, you take it out your pipe, it's somewhere between 10 and 20, so usually takes about five minutes or so. And if you turn your kettle on full, you'll find out it's about five minutes. And it's always going to be that, because it's about energy transfer. The water needs that much energy to boil. 
the element can provide that much energy per second and so it takes that long to do it. Now it's the same with air, it's just with air the specific heat capacity changes. Instead of being 4200 joules it's 1006 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. So it's going to take less, but even so it's the same calculation. You take the specific heat capacity, which you need to look up, multiply it by the mass in kilos that you want to heat up, and you can work that out for the amount of air in a room. You just take the volume and the density and you'll get the mass. And then the number of degrees you want to raise it by. Now, quite often inside a building sort of 10 degrees centigrade or so. And you want it comfortable around about 20 degrees centigrade or so. So you're probably going to be raising the temperature of the air by about 10 degrees or so. So let's say we have a hundred cubic meters, which is roughly what this space is. In there is round about 125 kilograms of air. And we want to raise it by 10 degrees centigrade. So the answer is one, roughly the specific heat capacity, we'll round it to one. One times 125 times by 10. And that will give us the joules that we need to put out there to raise that temperature. Now remember, a watt is a joule per second, and that will tell us exactly how many watts we need over what time we need as a heater to heat that mass. Now, that's just physics. That is a straightforward relationship you can look up and you can calculate by multiplying three numbers together and tell you the answer of it. It won't change, irrespective of what you try to heat it with. Let me give you an example of that. This is nichrome wire. It's the same stuff as this, it's only thinner, so the resistance is going to be higher. It is universally the wire that is used in cookers and kilns and kettles and vape cigarettes and just about anything where you need a heating element that's what you're going to use, okay? So it's pretty much standard. This stuff was bought from Crazy Wire and it is for vapes. It's just a lot thinner. And if I cut off a length of that, resistance of that, it's about one ohm or so, okay? Now then, this is bog standard carbon fibre. It's the stuff that you make racing boats out of, car panels and very expensive bits and pieces. Now if I use a length of that, about the same, the resistance of that bit there is more or less 50 ohms or so. Okay, let's take our heating wire and we can put that onto a DC supply, which is what exactly what this is here. If I take that voltage up to 2 volts, it will pull about 2 amps or so. And what will happen is, obviously, it'll get hot, and there we go, it's cutting through the polystyrene. So for that wire, we need about 4 watts in order to get it hot enough to cut through the polystyrene. So I've replaced my heating wire with that little bit of carbon and if I take that up to 12 volts it'll draw about 0.3 of an amp, in other words 4 watts. Lo and behold it's cutting through the polystyrene. <laughs> okay that was a bit rough and ready but what's it telling us? Well it's telling us that we need 4 watts to cut through this bit of polystyrene and it doesn't matter what the material is. It needs 4 watts for this stuff and it needs 4 watts for this stuff. Both of them need to be 4 watts. If we get 4 watts of energy converted into heat, we can cut through a lump of polystyrene. Now those thoughts and those calculations are in fact a little rough and ready because remember, there's a homeostasis that goes on in temperature. If I heat this inside of the building, of course the building begins to radiate heat unless I've insulated it. And so it can be thrown out a little bit about how much heat you need by that factor. That's why insulation is important, because it brings that factor 
closer to the calculation that we just made and so we have a better idea of how much we're going to spend when heating a space. But it's why insulation is so important. Now interestingly enough, there is in fact a specific heat capacity for people. It's uh, 3.47 kilojoules or 3,470 joules per kilogram per degree centigrade. So if you're a large person, you're going to need an awful lot more heat to keep you warm, but then of course you have an awful lot more insulation around the middle. But it's the same idea that you need in order to work out how big your heater needs to be. Now, I was asked how can we make heaters more efficient? Well, unfortunately, the whole process is pretty efficient. It's reckoned to be 100% efficient for the conversion of electrical energy into heat energy. So you can't do a lot there. But you can do a lot with all the other things. For example, insulating it well. Or heating a smaller space, which is what we've been banging on about. We've been banging on about it because there's basically jack you can do and buying the latest and greatest advertising BS isn't going to help you much. You're still going to spend the same amount of money because you still need the same amount of energy to heat the same space to the same degree. It's just the way it goes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to like and subscribe.